not really gold, is it? It's more yellow. I'm sure you've heard of it before. You can get it at craft stores. It looks like this. Nowhere on this stuff does it say it's real, real gold. But I happen to have some that I know for a fact is. That is 24 karat gold. You can get like 25 sheets of that for like 10 bucks because it's such a little amount of gold. But you can foil things with it and it's gold. It's real gold. You can put real gold on anything. So let's get some of this stuff on a fishing lure and see how it looks. I think this might be a bit of a montage until we get to the point where we're painting this lure. That way we can get there and do this, this thing with the, with the leaf foil. Whilst this lure gets carved out, let's do a fun facts on gold. Gold, AU, is its atomic symbol on the periodic table of elements. That comes from the Latin word aurum, A-U-R-U-M. Uh, atomic number of 79, that makes it a very high atomic number where this element still occurs naturally though. It actually commonly occurs in free elemental form, which is just, you'll find a clump of gold laying around, like a nugget or a grain or a little pebble, you know? And geologically, that makes it so it can occur in veins also. And like, there's gold in them hills. It, it'll, it'll just occur naturally. It's rare that an element with such a high atomic number does that. Another thing about gold is that it's, it's like, it's here to stay. There's very few acids that actually dissolve it. It's extremely, well, let's just go with it's resistant to most acids. Um, you actually need like a uh, alkaline solution of cyanide. And uh, I, you can use, it says here, you can use a mixture of nitric acid and hydrochloric acid to dissolve, to dissolve gold. Um, mercury dissolves gold. It's insoluble. It's non-reactive. There's very few things that will react with it. That's what I'm trying to say. And of course, gold is a relatively rare element. It's a very scarce resource. That's why it was implemented as a monetary policy. The first gold in the world that was struck into the coin that we know of was in 600 BC in Lydia, Asia Minor. L Lydia, I've never heard of that, but that's where it happened and that's when it was. Yeah, given its very non-reactive properties, um, its scarcity, yet still you can go pull it out of the ground so it's here. Works perfectly as a system of money. It'll always have a really consistent value. We actually ran with that system all the way up until 1971 and now we have a fiat currency system. Um, that's just trust in the federal government for how much value your money holds and no longer sticking with whatever the value of gold is. Something that also aids in the reason gold works good as a currency is its malleability and you can melt it and you can separate it and divide it out. You can turn it into dust. You can, like, it works with everything. It's very uh, versatile. So gold is actually the most malleable of all metals. It can be drawn into a monoatomic wire. I think that means it can be strung out one gold atom thick into a, uh, into a length of wire. Those are gold atoms drawn out into a wire. Did you guys know that? And not only that, but it can be stretched. So it can be drawn out into that wire that's one atom, gold atom thick and then stretched out twice its length and then it breaks. That's pretty malleable. A single gram of gold can be beaten into a sheet of gold that's one meter square. I'm, I think a single gram of gold is actually a lot less than a cubed centimeter of gold. So I think it's like half that. And that can be hammered out into a square meter. An ounce of gold can be hammered out into 300 square feet. And the gold leaf that we're using today, it can actually be thinner than that. You can, you can, hammer, you can hammer gold out so thin to where you can start seeing through it. And, and light can pass through. I don't know if the light has to be really powerful, but it becomes transparent. So gold has a density that's higher than lead. It's almost identical to tungsten. Uh, people use tungsten weights a lot in fishing. Um, you get the same effect with gold for the same volume of gold as tungsten. That's why tungsten's mostly used in the counterfeiting of gold. They'll plate a bar of tungsten with gold 
and fool people into thinking the whole thing is gold. So a total of 186,700 tons of gold exists in the world right now. I think that's what they have extracted out of the world. So from mining gold and pulling it out of the earth, that's how much humans have in circulation. 186,700 tons. That was in 2015. There might be more. But that the mass of gold that we already have above earth, if you were to take it all and put it in one spot, melt it all down into one piece, it would be 21 meters cubed. What is that, like 25 yards? It would be a very big cube of gold, but compared to the size of the earth, it's not even visible. So the consumption of gold produced in the world, 50% of its jewelry, 40% of its investments, and 10% of it is in industry. So actually making products with gold is the industry part. And China is the world's largest single consumer of gold. As of right now, the price of gold per ounce is $1,309. A little one ounce gold coin costs $1,309. And it shouldn't be thought of as the price of a gold coin changes. Gold is a metal that there is very little on this earth that will be able to change its value. It's why people who call themselves preppers, um, they want to be prepared for like an event that happens on earth that is cataclysmic and it like destroys the monetary policy that their country had or their power of purchase is gone. It's not gone if you have a bunch of gold to trade because gold in its scarcity and its ability to not react with anything or go away will remain valuable no matter what. You could probably argue that uh, during a time of a uh, catastrophe, who's gonna want them? like who's gonna want gold? They're gonna want uh, food, water, practical resources instead of gold. I don't have much of an argument against that. That does make a lot of sense. But if it ever goes back to a more civilized kind of society, what is going to hold value no matter what, and have all of the properties of what a good system of transferring value should have? Gold would probably be first and foremost. Humans will always end up needing that. Something that's practical that you can trade for value and get resources with and you don't have to trade your own resources for. You just trade gold. Makes a lot of sense. Gold is one of the most inert elements on Earth as a pure metal. It's non-toxic and it's non-irritating even. You can eat gold totally fine. They use it as a food decoration sometimes with the gold leaf stuff. People ask me or they have comments about how I use lead in my fishing lures and they ask if there's a substitute for using lead and you could use steel, you can use tungsten, you can use uh, rocks I guess. What you're looking for with fishing lures is something that has the smallest amount of volume but um, the most amount of weight. So you want something that's really dense and lead provides that cheaply. The closest thing to lead would be gold. Gold is right next to lead on the periodic table and its density is very simu similar. But if I wanted to put an ounce of gold in a fishing lure, it would cost me $1,300 to do so. I don't know if I'm gonna put every fun fact I went over in this video, but I've been at this for quite a while and uh, fun facts are over. I kinda realize this is the furthest I can get this bait before I need to start sealing the wood well, I could still cut the joint, finish cutting the joint, and drill all the pilot holes, but before I pour the lead in it, I need to seal the wood. And I wanna keep going today. And I already have a bait ready to paint. It's that exact same bait I was just carving. So let's get to putting gold on a lure. The first thing I'm gonna do is apply the, the gold leaf stuff. And then I'll paint it. This is a metal leaf adhesive. It's designed for this, to adhere that stuff to other stuff. I think what you do is just leave it on the paper, the wax paper. You spray your thing that you want your leaf on. Then I'll just flip it over and put it on and kind of pat it down. I don't know. Let's just try something and see. It says this stuff has a long open time and it doesn't say to wait for it to get tacky. So I'm just gonna put this on. I 
I think I just wasted a bunch. I just kind of plopped it right in the middle. Yeah, I wasted some. No, you don't need to be using the back of your pinky. I just happened to be. Felt like the best thing to do. I'm trying to get it over halfway across the back of the lure. That way that when I do the other side across the top, it'll be, it'll come over this side. So I've got all of these carvings in here that I want to actually show up well. So this is a, a super small tip Q-tip kind of thing. You get them from the hobby stores. I'm just gonna go along the gills that I carved to make them show up better and push the gold leaf down. Opening up the eye socket here because I still want to put glass eyes on this lure. This is a fresh razor blade. I'm gonna trim the edges. That really doesn't look too bad. Very textured. Textured. It kind of looks different from all angles. On the camera it's showing up extremely shiny. I'm going to make sure it's all adhered to the body and there's no bubbles. or spots where it's lifted. And then I'm going to do the other side. That's the line. It went far past onto the other side of the lure. The gold foil from the first side. And it's adhered. Like I can't scrape that off. So that worked out pretty clean. Um, yeah, it's gonna do this side now. It came off in one piece. That's pretty seamless. You can't tell where the one layer ends and the other starts, except right there. But you probably can't, you know, you definitely can't see that. So yeah, perfect. I really do recommend using the back of your pinky. Works good for me. I don't know how much force I would need to exert in order to tear this foil that's on the surface of this bait, but uh, I don't want to find out either. All right, I'm gonna get the tailpiece covered and then I'll get back to you. And that is the tailpiece, covered in gold. Okay, I'm gonna brush the white on to the belly with a hand brush. Just gonna mix up some five minute epoxy and stick these eyes on this bait and they're just gonna be like that, they're just clear. It just so happened that inside of the eye socket, the gold on both sides, like, I don't know, it lines up perfectly to where it looks like an iris, and then it's the color of the wood behind that, or on the outside of that. It looks good. I'm gonna leave it, keep it simple. No extra color. Clear coat. Gonna dip the pieces in this stuff, let it all drip off, and then blast it in my UV cabinet. I'm being careful around the tail here and the tail slot to not get any UV resin inside of the slot. That way the tail fin will slide in nicely still. I'm gonna let that drip forever, probably like 40 minutes. Can't wait till it warms up and I can stop running that heater. I always have to work my YouTube videos around it. So I let that drip for 40 minutes. So if I get any drippage on this bait, well, geez, man. Stuff would require a lot of drippage, you know? It's a horrible word, drippage. Don't look at it. See you in a half hour.
that's how the finish turned out. I just got this bait put together. Yeah, the gold foil, it has a very particular finish. Very textured, but uh, I, I'm not sure if there's a technique I could have done to where it gets it a lot more smooth than that and it's not so wrinkly, but I really don't mind the texture in it. Nothing wrong with that look, you know? Last thing to do is get the tail fin molded and put it on this bait, then it's done. Then we're gonna see how it works. All right, at a creek, the uh, ponds and lakes around here are still pretty frozen, so creek will have to do. See how she swims. Like a champ. That current's annoying for glide baits like this, but swims nice and easy. I went with an extra long tail fin on this bait too. Long and thin. I think it looks good on this wider profile. I think it helps out with the action too. It's surprisingly stable. That's fast current I'm pulling it through and it's not wanting to do any of this, it's just swimming in an S. That's good. Man, can't wait for things to be in bloom. Spring to be here. I hate winter. I don't hate winter, but right now I hate winter. The action on that golden swim bait, superb. I'm really happy with it. I don't, I've never gotten that good of an action out of that size bait. I think it's seven and a half inches. Perfect for my style of fishing. Not too slow. I don't need to like concentrate on it lumbering along to get a good action and then I, but it's not one of those baits you have to twitch really hard to get good action out of it either. It's just, it's perfect. I like it. I'll be making more. Keep an eye out on the Patreon page. Cause if you ever want to get your hands on some, that's where they'll be soon. Not yet. It's not there yet, but soon. What else? Nothing. On to the next bait.